at uh, KwaZulu, Zulu land, was the, the, uh, epi the epicenter of the world AIDS epidemic, and certainly in South Africa. And I found, in traveling around that area of South Africa, that was the most Christianized, most normal, most religious area, not only in South Africa, but maybe in all of Africa, for that matter. And people watched very closely their intimate behavior with one another and their sexuality. If anything, it looked like an incredibly pristine area. It was said to be the center for AIDS. On the other hand, the beaches of North Durban and some of the areas like um, Cape Camps Town. Point in, in, in Cape Town seemed to be areas of the most open, clear sexual culture I'd ever seen. And yet, those were the last areas where you would ever find AIDS, on the beaches of North Durban, huh? or Sea Point, or Camps Bay, and the Tony areas of Cape Town. Why is that the case? That's a good question today. If you show that in your film, <laughs> that would be very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go to Michael Tracy. Yeah, I, um, first one I would want to make, I was in, interested in the this issue of the Law and Order episode of Christine Majore. Um, in fact, you may not know it, but I was actually also a narrative storyline in an episode of Law and Order. Um, <laughs> Uh, because of my work on the Ramsey case, except what was interesting was, it's a long story so I won't go into too many details, but you may remember in 2000, well you may remember in 2006 there was an arrest in Bangkok for someone who was accused of killing Jean Bonnet, he was brought back, and it was a huge story, and there was a, a university professor who'd been emailing this person for four years, that was me, um, but when they did the episode, they completely reversed what had actually happened, so when you're dealing with the mainstream media, you are, Let's, everyone here agrees um, that there is a problem in the way in which the public discourse about AIDS has been constructed. That, that is settled. That is not beyond quite. That is, that is absolutely agreed in this room. It seems to me that the, 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 the issue you have uh, and that you have to start discussing is how do you translate what you know into a narrative that somehow, at some point, may penetrate the mainstream media uh, through press releases, through through just just calling TV stations, through taking your science and making it accessible. One of the things that I've been, uh, as I've been sitting here watching the presentations, which have been fantastic, I keep thinking that is a great story. Um, but in order to in order for this to work. You have to make that translation in the face of what is going to be extraordinary resistance. I remember when I got involved in Ramsey, I made a very basic decision because the narrative about her death was exact. I, I would argue as or more powerful than the narrative, the orthodox narrative about HIV/AIDS. So the question was, how do you change it? And the only way you could change it is by taking it on full frontal. Get in their face. And I personally made a decision. I would never turn down anyone who wanted to talk about her. And then I would get in their face. Now, what I haven't heard, though, is, and I've been desperately thinking about how to do this, how do you make that, 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 that shift so that the mainstream media have to hear you? Like, for example, I would love to know how, who, who here is from what was generally known as the mainstream media? Nobody. 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's a lady in the back. So, it's an alternative paper, but yeah, I, I'm, with all due respect, I mean, I, 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 alternative new, uh, uh, media are very important. But my, by mainstream media, I mean mainstream media. San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco uh, Chronicle. Is the, is the, no, is the Chronicle no, here? No, is, are any local TV stations here? Are any local radio stations here? It's not your fault. I mean, it's not the fault. I mean, so this is a They've fantastic. They've been notified. Yeah, sure. So, so, the, so the, the, and I don't know what the answer is at this point. I mean, I've been racking my brain. Yes. And what I would do if I was in your position, because it is vital and it is necessary, because you will not shift the public or the public understandings until such time as your ideas start to percolate. And I know you're aware of that. But I just think, in a sense, the problem you face is embodied by the fact we have colleagues here from Brazil, from Mexico, Mexico. Mexico. Brazil, Mexico are here. Where's North America? Uh, and that fundamentally is a problem. And I said, I, I, you know, I'm obviously I'm saying not saying anything that you, you don't know, but I, what I am convinced of, because of my own experience in the past decade in dealing with a very different case, is it can be done. 
Because we shifted the narrative about that murder. We absolutely shifted it, and it can be done. But it's bloody hard work. Right. Uh, a very short comment on your question on, on South Africa. I think uh, what would be urgently needed is to focus on the real problems and finding uh, sensible solutions for this. And you know, you you know the uh, the real problems in South Africa are much better than I do. My impression it is poverty and social disruption, and the current paradigm uh, pretends that. The solution to these two problems is to buy uh, unreliable tests in, in, in the West and give toxic drugs. And I think one of the important messages would be to, to, to show that this is a scandalous approach and it is really in line with the history of colonization. And the, the solution would be to as, as it was suggested, to go to the people, see what their problem is, and find uh, sensible solutions. I think that is what really need, is needed. And that's uh, something uh, your former president, Tom Becky, had tried in convening that panel in 2000, where he invited about 40 different scientists and said, well, here's the problem, what are your solutions? And then there was a, a, a debate. Peter. Yeah, I have a quick question to you. Did you know until this morning that the South African population is exploding, that the Ugandan population is exploding, that the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa increased from 400 million at the start of the AIDS epidemic to 800 million now. I did not answer. You didn't know that, and you want to make a movie out. <laughs> did did you say you did or you didn't? No, I did know that. He did oh, know that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I, that's very good. So why do, do you think everybody knows that? I have never read that anywhere in the mainstream literature in the United States, the most advanced, sophisticated, and liberal country in the world. I've never seen it in the Spiegel in Germany. I've never seen it in England. Anywhere, in science, in nature, in none of these journals that are eager to touch, uh, to, 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 to describe every point mutation in the 3.5 prime end of a retrovirus. Well, uh, I've never mentioned these numbers. Those are numbers that are unassailable. I do, I completely agree with okay. you. So that's the, problem, the problem we have in South Africa is that the people that, ha that are educated and have the ability to go out and form their own ideas and decisions based, o uh, based on research have unfortunately been misled purely by um, Andrew Feinstein who, is an Af who wrote a book called After the Party and he had a huge attack on Thabo Mbeki and his HIV AIDS uh, research.